you know who's present already? I've got a lot of them. Um, Could I have your name, please? Yeah. Uh, Kathleen Sullivan. One woman, three names. No, no, yeah. I got you. I don't know you. Um, I don't know your name. Chris Meyer. And the woman right there. Uh, Christina Caldwell. So. I don't know the one with the blonde hair. Diane McGregor. Diane McGregor. Thank you. Um, <coughs> Dave, of course, Dave Mason is out of town. Uh, Brian Walker is also out of town on business, and uh, Gino cannot attend, so it's the five of us um, voting on all matters then. Um, First order of business is officers. This is, since this is the first meeting of the year. We have to elect a new chairman and a new vice chairman. Um, would nominate Frank for chairman. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um Well, I'll return the favor then. Uh, for vice chairman, I would uh, nominate David Teske. Um, unless somebody else wants I'll to. I'll second that. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We've taken care of that. Um, there are two public hearings uh, on the agenda tonight. Uh, one for uh, Tin Mine Road, uh, and um, I think that one is Caldwell. Um, and then the other one is uh, Stamey on uh, Candy Cane Lane. Um, I'm going to suggest we hear the Caldwell. Uh, variants first uh, because they're being represented by an attorney. I hate to have the attorney uh, wait here for an hour uh, charging his clients. So, um, Chris, uh, you're up. Uh, you, the way we work, you get to make a statement, we get to ask questions. Uh, we will then have um, any of others uh, who wish to comment, May, or anybody else who has a direct interest. Um, and at least for everybody present, um, these are both variance requests to in, and for the ZBA to grant the variance, um, we have to be satisfied that five criteria are fulfilled. Those criteria, I can state them, that, that, that there's plenty to talk about in each one, but the criteria uh, that we uh, have to find that they met is that the variance will not be contrary to public interest, the spirit of the zoning ordinance is observed, substantial justice is done, the values of the surrounding properties are not diminished. And the last one, uh, which, which is known as a hardship issue, is the literal enforcement of the provisions of the ordinance would result in an unnecessary hardship, um, meaning that owing to special conditions of the property that distinguish it from others in the area, there's no fair and substantial relationship between the public purposes of the ordinance provision and the application of that provision to the property, uh, and also that the use uh, is a reasonable one. So we'll be talking about how the applicant uh, meets or does not meet those five criteria. Um, and with that, um, Chris, you get to, you're welcome to sit here, you're welcome to stand there. I would come forward with, uh, uh, Christina Caldwell sure. is hit with me tonight, and she's gonna speak as well. Uh, she knows a little bit more about the the actual project itself and, and, and some of the rationale you're, you're behind welcome. it. I'm here to talk about some of the very, how it fits into the variance criteria. Okay. So we both have something to say. You're welcome to sit here if you're more it's, comfortable or you're welcome we'll, to stay we'll, there, whichever. We'll, we'll come on up. Okay. She's brought with her today one of the solar panels that makes the makes the project work. Just leave it here though it's almost as big as we are. Uh, and again, I'm I'm here to talk about how the how the project fits into the zoning criteria, yeah, the variance criteria, and uh, and the uh, Jackson Town Ordinance. Uh, essentially, uh, I, I don't know if everybody. I did submit a memo uh, to to the board. I don't know if everybody got a Everybody's chance to, seen it and it's been to take a look at it. But website. Uh, some so some of, some of my uh, presentation is going to be repeating repeating that, but 
Essentially, this is a, uh, a project that is uh, designed to be in what we think is the first uh, a zero net home in Jackson. Uh, they are uh, looking to get uh, LEED certification and I believe LEED Platinum certification, which is the highest level of uh, LEED certification, uh, which is a uh, leadership in energy and environmental design. Yep. Uh, essentially what that is and what they are trying to do is make a home that uh, is net zero in terms of everything, in terms of electricity, in terms of heating, uh, in terms of cooling, in terms of heating your water, and in fact, at times, the home will give back to the grid. Uh, it's, this is a project, uh, I, I think, again, is I think the first in Jackson. Uh, it's, it's in a location where uh, the, uh, the solar panels work uh, by uh, being at a proper angle to the sun. And part of why this project needs a variance is to have that have that angle towards the sun on the roof line, and to have the pro have the project uh, complete with the wraparound porch that makes the project uh, look nice and have have curb appeal, you need to ha you need to be within the variance as opposed to another angle. Uh, looking at the specific zoning criteria. Um, will not be adverse to the public interest. Uh, this house is designed to benefit the public interest. Uh, it's the, the Supreme Court is said to be contrary to the public interest. It actually has to be in marked uh, conflict with the zoning ordinance. Uh, this is what all we're asking to do is to rotate the house a bit, which puts the, puts the porch uh, five point, uh, five feet and eight inches into the setback. The setback is 50 feet on the front. It's a front setback, not a side setback. Uh, so we're looking to encroach uh, uh, about 10% into the setback. It's, it's not a significant encroachment into the setback. There's still, uh, there's still over, uh, over uh, 40, 40 some odd feet uh, of setback uh, from the road. Uh, it's not uh, in, in comparison to the other properties in the area. Uh, I understand that one of the abutters is also in the setback, so it's not a, it's, it doesn't look different from the, the uh, area, uh, and I'm not aware of any opposition from, from abutters, uh, although they may, may be here. Uh, the spirit of the ordinance, um, as, you, as you all probably well know, uh, the, the, the purpose of the zoning ordinance, as, as with a, the many ordinances, is to promote the health, safety, and general welfare of the town of Jackson, uh, to maintain the economic health of the town, and to provide, uh, uh, provide with, uh, social services to the town uh, in character with uh, both uh, the, the current uh, sta state of the town and the rural village character of the town. Uh, we submitted pictures, but we'll also show you pictures of the home. Uh, the home is, uh, I will say, is a beautiful project that fits, fits within the neighborhood. I don't know if any of you got a chance to go up and take a look at the project. The project is, is, uh, is how it will look. Uh, I think the rest of the pictures look better, but we've seen them. They look better on your printer than they did on mine. It was <clears throat> not bright when I took them today, so. But the encroachment that we're we're looking to do to make this make this uh, zero net uh, home work uh, doesn't take away from the neighborhood, but actually, as it uh, is uh, a benefit to the environment and a benefit to the grid, it actually gives back electricity to the to the to the uh, co-op. Uh, it's a benefit to the welfare uh, and uh, general welfare of the town of town of Jackson. Uh, the third criteria, uh, as the chair stated, is uh, that it would do substantial justice. Uh, the Supreme Court uh, of New Hampshire has said that the, when you're looking at the uh, substantial justice criteria of the, the granting of a variance, uh, the loss of the property owner in not granting the variance needs to be uh, uh, not more than uh, a loss to any, any other owner in Jackson. So it, the, in other words, you have to have, uh, if you don't grant the, if the grant, the grant of the variance shouldn't harm another owner in Jackson more than it benefits the uh, lot owner. Here, uh, again, the, 
you don't have a significant encroachment into the, the setback and the benefits to the town uh, are again as of, as of stated uh, if you look at the project the next the next criteria is uh, the, that uh, you can't diminish uh, values uh, in the surrounding properties uh, this is a project that fits into the neighborhood uh, it's a project that somebody driving up Tin Mountain Road uh, will look at and say uh, at least in my opinion fits into the neighborhood we uh, and uh, is is a nice uh, has has nice curb appeal as you're driving up up the uh, up the road uh, including the porch uh, that uh, completes the project uh, the hardship uh, that relates to the uh, the project uh, which is the fifth fifth criteria uh, the size of the size of the lot and the way the lot is is situated uh, to make the project work again uh, you need to have the house in this configuration given the guilt given the the uh, building envelope uh, the need that uh, and we'll talk more about the needs of, of the interior of the home later but the, the needs of the home uh, and how you have the porch situated uh, makes it so this encroachment is necessary to make this this project work on this lot uh, talking about the needs of the in inside of the house there, there is a separate um, uh, provision in the ordinance which I don't think the, the chair mentioned but uh, in in an alternative to finding a hardship that the board can't find that there's a hardship that uh, creates a, a necessity for a variance on this lot uh, given the given the nature of the lot uh, the uh, legislature has allowed for uh, zoning boards to ignore the hardship uh, criteria where there's a disability need uh, here, uh, the, both of the parents of the applicants, uh, one has Parkinson's disease, one has uh, uh, rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis, and both uh, have suffered from skin cancer. Uh, the configuration of the house is designed to have two bedrooms on the first floor so that uh, both the uh, parents of the applicants can use and enjoy the house. Uh, the, uh, this, this necessitated the angle of the house again, uh, they, they're filling out the, uh, the building envelope because of the need to have those two bedrooms on the, the first floor. Uh, the wraparound porch uh, is in a location again uh, in the in the uh, in the setback uh, because that's the shady section of the house. There is no shade on this lot. If you can you can kind of see how the lot's configured, but the porch on this aspect of the house provides for uh, shade so that both the uh, uh, both the parents of the applicants can sit outside and enjoy some outside time in the shade rather than having the porch on the other side where it wouldn't be in the setback but would be in the in the sun so in the alternative the board can't find that the ver that the hardship criteria is met uh, they are allowed by the legislature to, to find a disability variance uh, based on those criteria uh, with that, I think I, I will turn it over to, to Mrs. Caldwell, and she can provide some information about the specifics of this this project. And if anybody has any questions for me afterwards as to how that fits into the criteria, they certainly can. Yeah. Ask uh, me. Well, uh, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, well, I I know you all know that I'm not from here. Um, in fact, I'm not even from New England. I'm actually from Southern California. Um, I met my husband when he was stationed at Camp Pendleton and he brought our family back to New England and we always thought we might move back to California but the first time we came to Jackson I said well this is where I would like to end up. Um, our real estate agent was kind enough to help us find a lot that we could actually afford and one of the reasons why this lot was affordable was that it's a trapezoidal shaped lot and the building envelope is kind of squished into the corner to capture the view. However, when we were looking at that, despite the, uh, the limitations of the building envelope, it just happened to face south perfectly to capture uh, the solar shingles that we brought. And those are solar shingles and not solar panels. So when you are driving by, you don't have those raised panels that most people don't like. These are actually shingles. They take the, the place of the asphalt shingles. So we were able to go ahead and build a home that would have the solar energy. 
Um, I find the idea of having a vacation home that's often empty, that has to be heated, it seems kind of a waste. Uh, so we need to make our own energy to keep this house uh, as close to net zero as possible so that we are not a drain. Um, so we set the lot and we set the house and then as Chris was mentioning, uh, our parents are very interested in coming. They have severe physical limitations. We have a grand total of three steps to get to the main floor and then I have to make a correction. We have one bedroom, but we have one bedroom, one bathroom, a kitchen and a living space all squished into this 800 square feet. And that pushed us to the very edges of what we could build. Um, we put the house up, we drew the plans, and we noticed that we have no shade. And also, honestly, when my neighbors drove by before we put the porch on, it was not a really a particularly attractive house. I don't think it was as much of an asset to the neighborhood as it is now. When we pulled the porch around, we were able to capture some shade. We were able to improve the look of the house dramatically. I feel when I drive up Tin Mine, and in fact, when I drive up to Jackson, it, everything is quite picturesque. It's very lovely. And I wanted to carry that into the design of our house and make sure that when people drive by, they say, well, that looks nice. It's right there on the view. You see the rest of the mountains behind it. We have had a lot of people drive by and say that it looks, it looks very natural, a little bit rustic. Um, it's a modest house. We didn't want to have some sort of McMansion. Um, but again, the, the lot was limited. In fact, the fact that it was limited was how we were able to do this on something of a budget. Um, I do have lead information if anybody would like to have the pamphlets. Uh, I think having a lead project here is going to be a really good thing. Part of the lead project is we will have to have three open houses to show the public what we are building and why it's a good idea. Uh, so there is some value in teaching local people if anybody is interested in knowing how to be sustainable. Um, everything in the house is running on electricity, which is coming off the solar, although we do have a little bit of a backup heat because it can get quite cold here. Uh, when we're not in the house in spring through fall, we'll be generating energy continuously and it will go back into the grid and probably my neighbors will be able to capture it. Um, so I think that's a very, it's very important to my husband. We use solar shingles on other projects that we know of and um, I wouldn't have built a house without the solar. I wouldn't have wanted to move here and heat an empty house. And, and um, I'm very excited about the project. I think it's been beautiful. My parents and my husband's parents are very excited. Um, and I, I really think, as you see from the pictures, if you look at it and you take the porch off, we've really diminished the look and we've killed all the shade. So um, I would have liked to have been in the set back more and we had never intended to throw the porch on until we realized we had no shade. Um, we just, it's only 28 feet deep and we crushed everything we could into it. Um, I, we're going to put a beautiful roof on the porch and I, again, I feel as people drive up the street, it's going to be an asset rather than a detraction from the view and from the location. Um, I'm not sure. What else to say? But I, I am I'll, very hopeful. No, I, I have enough questions. But. Sure. I'll, I suppose I'll add before I before I answer some questions that you know I, I do a number of these, and I uh, from from looking at this application and doing a lot of these, I think that this this is a project that variances were made for. Uh, it's a project that provides some benefit to the town. Um, and it provides some benefit to the town and that it's a model of this uh, lead and uh, energy uh, efficiency uh, that I don't think exists much in this in this area, not not just this town. Uh, and it's not, uh, as the Supreme Court said, in a market conflict with the ordinance. Uh, it promotes the underlying underlying ideals of the ordinance. So that's what a variance is for. Well, uh, we won't ask questions as we wish. I'll dust her off, though. Is I, I have a, I'm not sure I understand what the special conditions are here relative to other properties in the neighborhood. Well, this, the, the, we're talking about the porch. We're not, which, we're not talking about anything about the energy efficiency. So I, that seems not all that relevant to the issue of special conditions. 
the special condition of the lot is the slope of the lot, the building envelope of the lot, and, and how this house needs to be situated on the lot. Um, as I understand, in the, the Supreme Court has moved on hardship. It's relax, relaxed the standard of hardship over the years such that you're really looking what is the reasonable use of the property. And if you can't fit the, 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 the reasonable use of the property within the, within the uh, building envelope and need to go outside the setback because of that, uh, because of the condition of the, the property, that's, that's a reasonable use of the property and a variance is allowed. Uh, it's, it's really the size of the building envelope, the slope of the lot, and how the sun comes into the lot. So really it's a, it's a sun, it's a sun issue. Aren't the other houses, the neighbors, face the same slope issues and size of lot? I, I suspect that I suspect they have different different angles and whether you could put this house I haven't looked at every every lot on the street and whether you could put this house within the within the setback or not uh, but it's the it's the characteristic of this lot and the project that they want to do on it. I have a question on that um, the, we talked about the envelope the uh, <coughs> setback was a hundred and what is it? 125 feet was from the road to the back of the lot. You have a 20, let's call it a 38 foot house. So you had another 20 feet, the house could have been set back had you chosen to do so before mm -hmm. you built it. I, I don't think that's correct at all. Right. <laughs> the roof against the back. But when you see here, it's 125 well, feet. Well, that's nothing to do with it. This, this dimension. See the, there's see the setback feet, line? There's 50 feet. Right. That's all that matters in this 25 feet. There. But from here to here, that's it's 125. And from here to here, it's 125. I don't think that's drawn right. I mean, that's what... It, it makes no sense to me. If the house is 30 foot feet mathematically, it doesn't work. No, this is, a, this is not a square here. I understand that, so that. but it's 150 right. feet back. So from one of the corners, right. even it doesn't make sense. Okay, I won't ask the question. Uh, when, when we were originally given the surveys, uh, the, the people who first owned the lot, you see this is the only building envelope. It's right in here. And the view is kind of right, right here. And it's a trapezoid. So from here to here, in order to meet the well setbacks and, uh, and the street setbacks, this is only 28 feet. You can only go 28 feet deep. You can get wider this way, but it's never going to get but any But you could have gone deeper. wider that way. You uh, chose to do what you did. We didn't know how to build a house that was really long. It would have looked kind of like a, a long house and get the solar shingles. You, you have to have a roof pitch that's a certain degree that. and you can't keep going. Um, you know, you, it has to be a certain pitch and a certain angle. And to catch the solar, I, I don't know how to make this house keep going wider and keep the pitch of the, of the roof. So it would have been, it would have had to have been a long, uh, but then you narrow start house. On the side, so, I mean, I could add a garage on, you know, I, I know that I can keep going in that direction, but it, there's no way to make a house that's shaped. It, it, well, it would have been a real ice, or I'm not sure how we would have put a house in that, in that space. Um, Another factor of an energy efficient home is the squarer or rounder it is, the more energy efficient it is. So, right. to extend the length, it makes it, it just. Worse. Yeah, it, we I mean, lose. Not that that's an issue for the zoning board, but that's why. Yeah, we really have to keep it up and down. You yeah, know, we just I, can't I just be wide. I don't see it as, as being, you know, it was choices that you made on the lot to do what you did. You brought it to the town the way you saw it when it was all done. The town approved it, and then you changed it. You came into the setback without asking anyone. And now you're coming back to ask us to make everything okay. And it just, I just have a hard time with that because I don't see, the, the solar is your choice. It was your free will. You were given a lot of a certain perspective. You made decisions that you made. We all do that. Everyone in town abides by the setbacks. 
Um, I, I don't see any other of my neighbors abiding by the setbacks. I know that's not that has nothing to do here, but that statement I think is. If everyone's abiding by the setback, then well, then I'm asking you. why are we not abiding? That's really the question well, I'm asking. Well, 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 okay. The neighbors presumably are grandfathered that they're yeah. built okay. before. And, 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 and I would and, and suggest why we're asking is it fits the zone, the yeah. variance criteria, yeah. right? And, because and it's a great project. Board, the zoning board is designed to yes, yes, I understand that. that. I'm, I'm trying to get to that. Yeah. Dave. Anything? I guess I had a question about the. You came in for the original building permit, and you didn't have the porch on, right? No. So you decided to add the porch. Did you come in for a second building permit when you added the porch? No, we did not uh, seek good advice as to whether it would be a problem or not, and we added the porch. We just asked our builder to add the porch on to gain some shade. I happen to be driving up Switchback. There's a beautiful new home there with this wraparound porch, and I asked uh, my builder to put it on. Somebody so. else. Somebody else was doing the building permits. Right, for them. but yeah, you, you didn't. It, so the applicant theoretically right. it should have had a new building permit to put that to make that modification. Theoretically, it, and and they got a stop work order, and they stopped. And we stopped, stopped immediately. Immediately, yeah. Uh, yeah. But but they were not. It was essentially the applicants. The stopped. applicants themselves were not yeah. doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Can you share that? Well, no. Well, I had the request to second build it, but it did not. Right, that's correct, and because but only because of the setback. Because of the setback, yeah. yeah. No, um, that, that was that was my only concern was because I guess Jeff was stopped, told to stop building and he didn't, and then the inspector had to go down and fill out paperwork to get him to stop. So oh, I, I, we stopped on I think time. we stopped on the porch immediately. Like he said, stop the porch and the porch. No, the building no. inspector's right there. Oh, yeah. we didn't stop on the porch. No, <clears throat> I asked Jeff a week earlier to stop until we get it situated <clears throat> out. I came up probably five days later. I noticed they were still working on the porch. I stopped in. I just mentioned to them, you know, I thought we were going to stop working on this. And when I continued to work, I said, well, i got to go do some paperwork now. And I had to go right and go down and make up a stop work order and send it out to everybody. We'll let you have a chance to make state final statements. Um, but it seems, unless there are more questions, it'd be a I do have one more question concerning the handicapped access. The handicapped access, even without the porch, presumably would still be there. I mean, you originally designed the original design of the house. Yeah, it's a straight walk. Yeah. It's a straight walk, or maybe yeah. there's one or yeah. two stairs up. There's just two stairs up, yeah. Uh, but even without this porch, even without the porch that's currently in the setback, um, there'd still be the same quality of access. Yeah, it's the access is there. We're just looking for a shaded area so that people can actually, you know, we you well, come this, to the mountains and we're looking to sit outside. This is, this is shade on the uh, northeast, the north. east side of the house, or the west side. Of, the, 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 I, I mean, on the west side, shine. there's the, this whole area. This is the shaded part. I don't know if I have a good picture. So it's oh. shade in the afternoon, but not the morning. Um, this gets. This is all afternoon shade. The sun comes right around here and shines right through this whole section, all afternoon. Um, it's. It's not getting sun. From here, it's coming right across because the sun, is right to the side of the house and it comes, right through here. You know, it shines on the mountain, and right up through. This but, whole but the, morning, well, okay. but the morning, you know, there must be morning sun uh, over here. So, yeah. but all afternoon it comes, you know, if it shines on the back of the house right here, but also comes right through because it's an open deck. There's no. So, you know, so the question of handicapped access, handicap, uh, I'm not sure what it's called, physical disabilities, I suppose, is not a question of access to the house uh, by your parents, but a question of whether or not. Uh, there's a shady area outside. Yeah, just a 
Um, okay. and, and the statute is, it allows people with dis disabilities to regularly use and enjoy the premises. Yes. And again, this was something apparently you didn't consider when you had the original building design. No, we didn't. And then as it, as it went up, you know, I realized there's no shade. Um, it's also looking very off kilter. Um, you know, what can we do to improve the look of the house, get the shade, and get it right? And, and again, I, we pushed it to the, the inside, we pushed to the envelopes to just get what we needed out of the main floor. And this, there was an architect involved in this? And you, uh, yes. And you're building, you were involved in the building the, process. The original you, design of the, but of I mean, the you're, house? You're, you're, you and your husband are in business that has something to do with building. With building, yeah. We, we okay, so. do a lot of lead consulting and stuff. Have we received any statement from the butters? Uh, we haven't had a chance yet. We, no, no, I meant in writing. Nothing. Yeah. Um, Okay, I, we're at the point now that I'd ask, I guess I'd ask you to step back and I'll have see if anybody else wants to say anything. No, include Kevin in that if you want to clarify anything what he saw, uh, as well as any butters. Um, just identify yourself if you can. And Kevin, you don't have to say anything, it's just if you feel you. Want to clarify anything? Um, yeah, I'd just like to clarify some stuff here. Okay. Can I go? Uh, you can sit there. You can sit there. Okay, I'm going to sit here. Um, well, I was hired this past summer. Um, I think I came on actually in August. That's the date. But anyway, <clears throat> so I had to catch up to it. So all the existing houses that were happening, all the permits that were out, you know, I had to take a look at each of them and, you know, catch up on, this, you know, what's what the process was and what's going on in town. And um, this has actually been filed, this, uh, this slide here, of all the permits. And uh, let me just explain. <clears throat> For some reason in um, January, February, April 2013, there was a permit pulled and it was for a different owner, um, Gwen Burdell. But it was basically for the same house. And actually, when you signed off on it, <clears throat> and I think at the plan, I mean, at the time, the, um, let me show you something. The plans that were approved. Oh, which one come up here? Why don't you come up here so we can see the plan? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Just don't cover up the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first permit with a different name on it. And I think this was the original. Kevin. I think that's the original, and I think this is. I, I don't know who the, the people were. Who their name on it? I'm not really sure. But this must have been the uh, plans that were approved. Um, let me show the house. But anyway, the um, as you can see, the deck's not on there. And if you go through the plans, it's not there. So and, and that's in, that was attached, but not that. Well, I think this is all, this is, know, but this was all with it. Okay. So anyway, like a month later, there's another permit. Five, um, 2-4-2013. And this is the, the current owner, I believe. And I think, same thing, it's been, it's been approved again. Andy Chambers was the building inspector at that time with these prints. And then, um, let me see something. So a year goes by, and I guess at that time Andy quit, and um, Bob Goodrow mm -hmm. came on as building inspector. Mm -hmm. So there's a new permit, and I just, I've, I've noticed here, the new permit. Was this a new permit, Andy, or an extension of the other one? This, is a, this looks like another, another application to me. Okay. Um, I get to it. But anyway, it's not signed by any town official. Uh, Andy's gone. Bob Goodrow never signed it. Um, so I, you know, and I, I think they're going by these plans. But like I said, no town official actually, you know, signed the thing. And um, is there anything in the minutes that the, the selectmen acted on it in any way? Not that I know. 
but let me let me find that page. Oh, here, Can I ask you a question? Are you saying that we filled out a permit with the previous owner's plans? Because the condition of us purchasing the lot was that the permit, the plans we submitted. Would well, be these are these your plans that you submitted. You want to take a look at them? Because yeah. I've never seen the previous owner's yeah. plans, and we did not. Well, use let's see if we can. That seems to be pretty easy. And your architect. Those pro those look like ours. Okay, all right. So I don't know who the previous owner was, but you know, like I said, I can't. These are reason. just the. Um, well, the here is. Yeah. These are our plans. Yeah, These were not the previous oh, yeah, owners. Right yep. All right. So that that. Yeah, we did. We did not um, submit their plans for approval and then turn around and, and okay. come up with the different. Okay. So as you can see, the text yeah. not on there. It's, no, it's just to yeah, here. Just that, to that's here. what we said. Is we swung it around right, after, right, right, right. after that. Yeah. So anyway, then I had this other. I had this other. Like I said, this so there was a building permit approved by Andy Chalmers. Yes. For, for that. Yes, yeah, for that. In 2013. So yeah, and that must be the 524 ones that it goes with that. And then there's another one here. Let me find the title. Page What's here. the date of the check, Andy? Or, uh, okay. <clears throat> What's the date of the check? Oh, yeah, there you go. That might be something too. Well, this is 528. 14 or 13. Oh, 14. 14. Yeah. So, anyway, it's not, a, it's not I, I don't see it signed by any, uh, any official. And here's, here's some of the stuff here. It's 528.14. So it's like almost a year later. That may have, was it perhaps just a renewal? I, that's for extension. That's what I'm guessing. I mean, well, let's see what the check's for. Yeah, $25. So it's, it's a, an extension. All right, so same thing. I don't see it signed, but that's that's whatever because they were approved with that. But that house, as it is, was approved for these plans, and um, and, therefore, oh. and therefore Kevin, the extension would also apply to that, unless unless it was noted otherwise. Right, right, exactly, yeah. So so anyway, you know, uh, I guess Goody did all the the footing and the uh, poured concrete wall inspection. We had documents on that, and then they started framing it. And um, anyway, I came by one day and I see the porch being framed into the driveway. So I, I stopped in. I saw Jeff, and I mentioned that you know you guys are building the setback, and uh, why don't you stop building on it, and we'll find out what's going on, you know. And, I, and anyway, I came back a couple of days later. I think it was like five days later, and they were they were still working on it. And I said, well, I gotta go get a, make a, you know, write a stop work order. So I did that and sent that all out. Um, I recall that we had a discussion about that. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> so that's, I mean, that's where that stands. But, um, uh, what am trying to say here? I think the architect, I mean, he knew that, oh yeah, it's another one. I saw Jeff the second time, he had another set of plans that showed the, the extension on the deck. And I said, uh, he wasn't really sure of the setbacks or not, but I'm sure the architect was, because when you look at the site plan, you can see that, you know, where the setbacks were, and they just, they just built it, and, you know, hope they could get it passed, or someone wasn't going to catch it or whatever, but you know, here we are now. So. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. All right. Um, are there others that wish to make a comment? Um, okay. Would you, uh, Chris, would you like to make any final comments at this point? Sure. I, I, I suppose would I would just say. Right? Or would Jeff like to make a comment? It's Jeff. The builder. Oh, is Jeff here? There we go. Oh, oh, yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. My ear and something great is. <laughs> I mean, if, do you have comments to uh, um, make? Um, I mean, I don't know how much I can really you know, put in, just that, you know, when we were, obviously the plans we have did show the wraparound and we, and like Kevin said, he did come up and he made it aware to us, or aware, aware to me, um, he said I'd probably, you know, not go any further, which, you know, obviously we kept going, but you, you know, nothing was really concrete or whatever, um, and then he came in with a cease and desist, and obviously, you know, we didn't go any further, um, and I did talk to Kevin, and obviously, you know, his input, he didn't think there was any problem in that sense, as far as, it be, you know, it's not infringing upon anything, and 
this and that. Um, you know, we're all thinking what's what's the problem with exception of the setback, you know. So but anyway, it's really stopped. Um, you know, and this is where we are now. So we worked on other areas and you know, just kept going as far as we could, you know. But you know, that's all I guess I could say. I don't know. <laughs> Have you been up there? Have you seen it? Yes, I have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank yeah. you. I suppose just briefly in closing, I'll, I'll say, you know, the, the Caldwells are here asking for a variance. Uh, we submit that it, it meets the criteria of a variance. They hired uh, professionals to, to do the work, uh, professionals to do the architecture work, uh, professionals to do the site plan work. Uh, they're trying to do they're trying to do the right thing and and create a nice thing for the, the town of Jackson and for themselves that fits into the neighborhood, that provides a benefit to the to the town, uh, provides a benefit uh, to the to the grid, and that it gives back energy to the grid. And I would suggest that that's exactly what a variance is for. It's for something that doesn't go uh, doesn't go extremely outside what the what the ordinance is. Uh, here we're only four feet into the 50 foot setback. Uh, and, but but in doing in in having a slight variance from the ordinance provides a benefit to the town and doesn't provide uh, any detriment to the town. Um, here, uh, there's no butters here uh, opposing the project. There is no no discernible detriment to the town uh, by this project. There's a benefit to the town by this project. Uh, it's why we have variances. Thank you. I'll keep the hearing open in case there's any questions we want to get on the record. Um, but we have five things, of course, to consider. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, would anybody like to make any observations at this point? Or no, just did he say it was four feet? I thought it was five feet eight yeah. inches. It's four, yes, four, four feet. feet. Four feet. Four feet eight yeah. inches. Five, oh, five, five feet. Excuse me. Five feet, five feet, eight feet, eight yeah. inches into the fifty-foot setback. I'm sorry. <clears throat> well, um, yeah, I, I guess I have, I have difficulty with the special situ, uh, the um, the issue of whether or not. Um, the you know that there there's anything on this there's, there seems to be nothing that distinguishes this property from others in the area. Um, maybe all the whole premise of zoning is everybody has to follow the the rules. We have the ability to issue a variance if there's something if there's some special hardship here. But the hardship of maintaining a 50 foot setback from the front road is the same hardship the same hardship to every other lot on that road, and in fact, every road in the rural residential district has to follow. Uh, so that's that's the biggest obstacle I have. Um, I, um, you know, in terms of um, whether or not, you know, I, I, I guess I agree in terms of public interest, um, the, uh, you know, a five-foot a single house building five foot more into the setback of itself is probably not that big a thing, but if every property on the street did the same thing, um, there would be, I think, a substantial um, impact. Um, and in that, from that perspective, I think that, um, that one could even argue that uh, there is a uh, um, a, um, a a public interest. Another issue. <clears throat> another way to look at that is that the um, purpose of the 50-foot setback in our um, regulations is stated for the <clears throat> purpose of allowing um, the access for um, res response of fire and safety, um, and <clears throat> I think on. On one issue, we could say that 
if you wanted to look at it in this way, that the special circumstance would be that the, the house itself was limited to being no more than 28 feet um, because of the depth of the lot. Now, if all the lots on that <coughs> road were that same depth, then um, it would not, in fact, be um, a special circumstance. Um, the um, uh, topography may be such that would create a special circumstance for the situation of the home and or driveway and or well placement. Um, so I think there's a way of looking at it that could abide that ruling. Um, I, I realize it doesn't bear on how we're looking at this, but I think the issue in my mind was that had the applicant come to us and said, we'd like to build yeah. as opposed to <clears throat> having already built yeah, when our building inspector said, you know, you're just, you got an issue here. And um, that was ignored. And while it doesn't bear on our ruling, that to me is somewhat troublesome. Yeah. But um, I, I think I could find space in my thinking that a special circumstance is created. And I, I think with respect to the, the spirit of the ordinance that um, it, it isn't, um, I don't see where it's, it's it's egregious against the spirit of the ordinance. But again, I'm, I'm trying to take another look at it, just a, mm -hmm. a different view. But I certainly understand and accept what you were saying. Without a map in front, I can only speak offhand, but I've been looking we at maps. We, No, the, the town maps what I think no, about for the adjoining lots. For the adjoining lots That's in the whole neighborhood are these very postage size, less than a half acre lots up and down both sides of Tin Mountain. Um, their lot is not unusual for the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, they're all as tiny as can be. But we've got Tully Lewis across the street, I think. Okay, that's a little bit larger. But, but yeah, the, here we, here, here's what I'm thinking of right here. On that side of the street, there, there's like three lots in a row there that are pretty much there. There's the one we're talking about. Okay. And the fact that it was 33 to begin with, I suspect, although I don't know, that it started out as one single lot, lot number 33, and now you've got 33A and 33B next to it. Now, I'm not sure how the deed is registered and, and so on. That's that's a guess. But the result of all that is the, the important part is that they're virtually three identical small lots. Slight difference in uh, size, but not a lot. They're all parallelograms. Mm -hmm. Not crap as much. And uh, they, uh, you know, these three lots are pretty much identical. And they and also, they yeah, and they also all have the the slope to a lesser or greater degree, uh, you know, that, that drops off pretty quickly. And they're actually bigger than the lots on either side, if you just look at Which, well, those. no, either oh, side oh, is identical. Oh, oh, either side, but in the neighborhood. Oh, I'm saying in the neighborhood. If you're not just looking at three houses, but right. you're looking at 15 houses, have yeah. a bigger sample. Owing to the size of the lots, the all the other houses are non-conforming as well, but only because they superseded the right. ordinance. Right. right. And in that sense, it's no less usual or unusual. Fair point. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it. I do agree with you, though, that the, the, the use of the handicap issue um, with respect to this porch is, I, I don't see how that's applicable. Yeah, it's an honest uh, starter. But um, the biggest, I'm, I'm with Jerry, the biggest problem I've got is that this thing was submitted for a building permit without this on there. It was added without coming back in for a request for another building permit. I mean, that's, you know, that's contracts 101 as far as, you know, building something in the... Except that it would have come here anyway. Yeah. In other words, oh, it, yeah. it, if the... If the if, Andrew, if Kevin had said, no, who the, I'm not going to issue that building permit, right. as he properly should, yeah. um, then whether it was built or not built, it, we but would it, discuss but it. But it wouldn't come here already built. Right. That's and, my point. I, I, though That's I, my I, point. I'd just suggest that That's not up to the fact that that happened should not be That's what I was, an that issue was, here. That's my final remark. Is I don't, 
that, that it, annoys me, but I don't think that should affect the decision. It, yeah, in fact, <laughs> and I, I pointed that out in my statement. It doesn't apply to what we're doing. It's, uh, it's unfortunate we're even talking about it because right. we're giving people yeah. the impression that it matters. Yeah, right. Just, uh, and I'm also I really the point of order that the applicant, the, the homeowner, did not submit that. If you, you can look at the application and see that what what can a what can a homeowner do but rely on professionals and in this case a former building inspector of the town of Jackson, uh, but to submit the applications appropriately. And if you're even talking about it at this meeting that it's a factor in your consideration, it shouldn't it certainly shouldn't be weighed against the applicant. That's correct. No, and I don't think it's a That's factor correct. in the consideration. Yeah, I think. Can, can I say something? Um, I'm Diane McGregor. Are you in a butter or what is I'm your? I'm the realtor that sold the lot. <clears throat> okay. Am I allowed to speak? Yeah, I'll let you speak. <laughs> um, and I, I want to speak to the bigger picture of, of the specific variance that's being requested. And there's been some conversation about whether it benefits the community of Jackson. And we're working with the Caldwells to do some public service type things that will be relative to the specific house. And the variance will allow that project to enhance the community. I don't know if that's specific to the ordinance, but I think it, it will make a difference if, if the porch is removed and we're doing public service about energy efficiency, even if you're speaking to the neighborhood itself where there's many non-conforming lots, you're deciding what that neighborhood is gonna look like based on whether you can have a porch five feet into the setback. There's a significant difference. If a house is built with a box without a porch, the value, the environment, the road appeal, all of those things significantly affect the neighborhood that's there. I don't know if I'm out of order to speak in that sense of the benefit to of the project and the, the, the benefit to the community and the difference between a house with or without a porch. Um, but I just wanted to make those comments. Frank, can I say something? Uh, do you Mr. Jermaine. I just had a question. Doesn't the variance go with the land? Yes, it not does. Not the house? Well, it's... And, you know, I know they're inter intertwined, but... Uh, well, I'm not quite sure in the what way you're asking Well, the what I'm saying is the land issue is 50 foot is the setback, and if you've got putting five feet on the front of it makes it look better, uh, that's sort of a non-issue in a way. Mm -hmm. um, except that it, it could meet the, um, I don't think the, the, the justice criteria. Yeah. It, I, it, would, it would enhance the, the value of homes rather than detracting from right. the value of the butters. I just don't. I, I, from what I'm hearing here is that you know, there was a comment made earlier of, of it looks nicer, um, the value of the home. We're, I don't see us as being the House Beautiful Review Committee. And it's, it's, it's hardship, it's, it's a lot of things, but we really don't do aesthetics as an intrinsic, it might be part of it, but it, you no, know, it, it just doesn't ring right with me, that's all. You have to define that it detracts from, you, to not grant the variance, you have to find a detract yeah, from some exactly. way from the, from the exactly. You would have to detract from, but not necessarily add to. Yeah, so. Well, adding to is a, is a, it's, is a criteria in favor, but, but if you find that it doesn't yeah. detract, then. Yeah, if it adds to, it doesn't detract, is basically what he's saying. <clears throat> um, should we take a vote on each of the criteria? Yes. Well, discuss each one? Each one and review it and let us. Pardon? And review it. For yes. Okay, so the first one is the variance will not be contrary to public interest. Sorry? I'm going to leave it open because I, I do anticipate at least having to ask one more question. Um, meaning that. <coughs> For the variance to be contrary to the public interest, it must unduly and to a market degree violate the basic zoning objectives of the zoning ordinance. Determine this. Does the variance alter the essential character of the neighborhood or threaten the health, safety, or general welfare of the public? That's what we have to think about. Read uh, the first part of that again. 
For the variance to be contrary to the public interest, it must unduly and to a market degree violate the basic zoning objectives okay, of the zoning so ordinance. Determine this, does the variance alter the essential character of the neighborhood or threaten the health, safety, general welfare of the public? Um, and I, I, I mean, I did make one observation about this, is that, and there actually was a case on this uh, about somebody around the lake trying to have a, something into this, their setback. It was Town of Benfield, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and it was a small propane generator house or something. But the, 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 I think the Supreme Court upheld that, not because, again, it was just that small um, yeah, violation it may not have been material, but the concept that everybody on the lake could have done the same thing, in some, altered the character of that neighborhood. So I'm, I'm not trying to argue. I mean, uh, my position is that you know, if, if, if even though this of itself is not that material um, in terms of public interest, if you let everybody do it, it would have a market. Uh, impact, you know, it's death by a small by a thousand cuts kind of analogy, but but you know I recognize also that um, the house does look better with a porch. Um, no denying that, um, I argue that that's something that they should have been thought of when they were designing the thing in the first place, um, and somehow accommodated that if that was important. Um, there was an architect involved. But the, that, that's enough of my, the, my position. The, my view is, 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 as you pointed out in part of your statement, that the house looks better because of it. Mm -hmm. And that, the, um, that the, the court ruling with respect to the propane sheds all across the lake notwithstanding, that um, you know, if everyone in the street built within a setback in a new subdivision, I could understand that. In this situation where the houses are non-conforming in the environment around the home, I don't see how that this um, in any way um, detracts from. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, would, I would submit that the applicant meets the requirements of that condition. Okay. I'm well, sure we have a show of hands on whether or not. Yeah, I, I yeah, agree with that, by the way. It, it does not detract. And I don't think that uh, I don't think it detracts at all from the, the character. Okay. So that's if we're taking votes. So, all in favor of that the applicant has demonstrated that they've met this criteria. Uh, that is not contrary to the public interest. Raise your hands. Okay. And those opposed. So we agree there. Um, and the other. They, they have met that criteria. Then the spirit of the ordinance observe, is observed. I mean, in many respects, this is much the same as the first one. Um, and you know, generally, if you think the applicant has met the first one, they should meet the second one. But um, again, um, I think um, the comment I like um, is that Well, I guess I'm not going to say anything on what this means. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, it's a, uh, other than it tends to go hand in hand with the first one. So, yeah. To me, the key word there is spirit. Yes. Not letter. Spirit. That's, right. That's exactly. And that's how it's been viewed in the courts. So. Yeah. Yes. So, all of those who feel that the applicant has met this criteria. Um, Raise your hand by saying yes. And opposed. And actually, I'm not voting on this one, so I'm not sure. It's not a matter. Third one is um, uh, substantial justice is done, and this is where the uh, where the loss to the individual, in this case, not having the porch, um, is not outweighed to the general public overall. So not so much one other neighbor, but the general public interest, which is the whole purpose of the zoning ordinance. So they'll ask whether or not you believe 
um, the applicant has met this criteria that uh, the um, loss to the individual um, uh, is not outweighed by a gain for the general public. Or a loss to the general public. Yeah. All in favor? Yeah. Okay, so we're unanimous there. Fourth one is uh, uh, the values of surrounding properties are not diminished. Um, here I'll note there's been no abutters or anybody claiming that this would not be the case and the applicant had a number of comments on why this did um, improve the neighborhood and we actually had a real estate agent mention that. Um, so all those in favor that the applicant has demonstrated this. Five to zero. So the last one is the question of hardship and whether or not because of special the special um, conditions of the property that distinguish it from other properties in the area, there is no fair and substantial relationship uh, between the general public purposes of the ordinance and the specific application of the of that provision to this property. Um, and here you heard my concern of uh, there's nothing terribly unique about this property. Uh, that I, I don't see the special conditions. Um, I, I agree. I think I think that that is is um, is the difficult issue here. Um, uh, however, uh, I would go back to so many rulings on this issue that the the court has taken such a liberal view of of this in the past that um, uh, I could see a way to, in my mind, to approve it. But I I certainly would like to hear what the circumstances, the special circumstances might be um, that would cause me to say I agree for the applicant in this regard. I, I, that has not been demonstrated to me clearly that there is a special circumstance. Um, yeah, the claim is that the, the solar makes it a special circumstance, but that's sort of a, a choice kind mm -hmm. of issue. And I'm not sure what that has to do with the right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's to I, me. I think if there's any special circumstance at all, and and you alluded to it, is that it's not special because the yeah. lots adjoining to it are no more deep or less than this one, and it's unfortunate that this lot is is constrained by that, yeah. and such that there is a taking in that we're saying you you, you know we're this land is set aside by that depth. Um, I'm mitigated in that regard because of the um, non-conformance of the abutting properties, that, you know, and, and only by the fact that they precluded the, the zoning. Area. So, I'm, I find a con. I, I'm sorry. Yep. Go ahead. No, that's yeah. our, our conflict here in, in that we're building a solar house. You heard all this about a solar house, which needs sunlight, and then oh, we need shade. I, it just you can't build a solar house in the shade and you can't have the shade and sunlight and it, it just it doesn't go quite for hardship because you chose to have a house in the sun I, I have a hard time with that so. well the, the hardship is the constraint of the of the 50-foot setback and denying them the use of their the enjoyment of their property with respect to the porch yeah. um, no. so I think a way could be found to say that is a hardship um, yeah, you're always going to have a sunny side and a shady yeah, house, right. yeah. and, unless you're right on the equator. And because of the constraints of the depth of the lot, um, that creates a, a special circumstance in this regard. Uh, again, I, in my mind, I'm stretching this to... to I think so, because yeah. you can buy shades and stuff. Well, I'm, I'm not sun. concerned with the shade or not yeah. shade. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm more concerned with what the property looks like with or without it, I guess. In other words, how does that... <clears throat> enhance or, or take away how is it different from the ones next to it right is, is yeah. to me that's the special yeah. what you have to show for a special circumstance so if, if someone else wants to help make my mind up in this direction I'm open to it but I'm also open to the other way <laughs> well I, I mean I, I asked Chris that question and mm -hmm. I'm not sure I really got an answer mm -hmm. um, that can I give another I, shot at it I don't. I will if unless anybody else has any comments. Uh, yeah, as just repeating, I guess I don't know that I'm expanding on it, but uh, I agree with a lot of what Jerry's saying. I mean, sort of, this is the one that I wrestle with the most. But uh, 
special circumstance to me means there's something unique about this property which sets it aside as being different from these other and if you look at the map the as I said at the beginning the 33 33 a and B those are almost so identical essentially the same all, all three of them are parallelograms they're all you know close to the same size so they're they're from from that that standpoint, there's really not a special circumstance here. Well, and and the, and the point is that the zoning ordinance, everybody's expected to follow it. Right. And the reason for the variance is because of something special or unique about that property, property that is unfair. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at, you know, this, this is always the tough one. Many of the it's not just the one two properties next to it, but most many of the properties up in that on Tin Mine Road. Um, they're all Cramped more there. or less the same size, and they're all limited on what you can build yeah. up there because it's so small. There's right. a lot of smaller homes, too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, um, can, can I speak? Um, or is it too late? No, um, you can, but let me, I'm going to let Chris speak first, uh, or at least ask, ask the question of how we would demonstrate uh, a special circumstance. I think she's also going to speak to that, so I can speak after her. That's fine. <laughs> Go ahead. And I won't forget if I go first. Okay. <laughs> I think the way it's unique is in, its, in, in the period of time. In our office, we have an 1896 map of Tyrol where someone first wanted to subdivide it. It was, you know, it's a mass of little lots. Um, so that was 1896. Um, then when it was done um, in its present form, they were putting up, you know, $15,000 A-frames and chalets on, again, postage stamp lots. Most of those are built on. But today, what you have to pay to, to buy a lot, you're not going to put up that A-frame. You're not going to spend $100,000 and put up an A-frame. So it is really narrow. That lot was on the market for a long, long time. And I can't tell you how many times I brought people up there. And I brought them up a second time, a third time, a fourth time. One person that I'd worked with for years who was a developer, we kept going back and going back, and he just could not figure out how you could get something nice on that lot and passed on it, as a lot of other people did. It wasn't our listing, so I can't even tell you how many people might have investigated all I can tell you it was my experience. So even though, yes, the neighborhood is full of small houses, over the years, people have been buying those, have been improving them. This one is a little bit different because it was raw land. Um, but they have created something that I think is, is special there, adds to the neighborhood. Um, and the uniqueness is just we have a well, a septic, and a house, and trying to put something on there um, is a, a very big challenge, which I think they met. Yeah. With the you, you, you sure? yeah, I, um, I think what Kathleen is speaking about comports with what we did at the Dickey House next door. Many, many people over the years had looked at that property and said, I'd like to do this or that, and because of our um, zoning ordinances, there was a, a, a severe limitation as to what they could do with that property to rehabilitate it. Uh, Mr. Dickey came before the board and, and applied for a variance and made what I think is a, is a nice contribution to downtown Jackson is how we allowed him to increase both the volume and, the, and in a sense, the footprint of the property, um, when in fact there was nothing really special about the property other than it was a postage stamp lot and that Jackson was improved because of of that ruling by the ZBA. Um, and I, I think that, that that special circumstance is always a difficult circumstance. And um, but I, I understand what, what you're saying. I appreciate it. And I suppose I'll, I'll add to what she said, and, and that's exactly what the, the variance is for, where the, the variance, the, the hardship criteria has always been the hardest one for the for zoning boards and for the courts, and it's gone through a it's gone through an ebb and flow over the years where 
they got to a point in, I, I think, the late 90s where the zoning boards were interpreting this to say, to, to look at the lots beside and say, well, is this lot really different? And the Supreme Court said, well, if you interpret it that strictly, you can look at any town and find a lot that's similar to, to that lot and say, nobody can ever meet that hardship criteria. And basically, uh, the Supreme Court in, in the middle of the, the 2000s said, we need to back off from that. We can't, this, cri this criteria cannot be, there can be no reason, there, there can be no use of this property. That if you apply the, if you apply the, the zoning ordinance as it's written without a variance, uh, you have to find a grant a variance that there could be absolutely no use. It's whether the use, it, so that they backed off the criteria, whether this is a reasonable use of the property given the conditions of the property. And the special, the special conditions of the property don't have to be conditions on the lot. It can be conditions of what you're looking to use the lot for. Is that, so the, the, the last statement on this hardship criteria out of the Supreme Court is a city of Summersworth case and the, the quote is, zoning boards should feel confident in granting variances where they focus on the reasonable use of the property, the relationship between the general purpose of the ordinance and the application of the ordinance to the property and the effect of the variance on both public and private rights of others. So essentially, they've taken the criteria, the other four criteria and put it in this hardship criteria because they don't want to say, you need to make this lot unique. It's what you're doing on the lots unique, or the lots unique, such that such that this project couldn't occur without the variance. And that's exactly what this project is. You've got a a solar project, which sure you could put on some other lot in Jackson, but this is this is the lot. The conditions of the project and the conditions of the lot make so that this this variance is a is a reasonable use. And that's why it meets the hardship criteria. They've back, the Supreme Court has backed away significantly from saying it's got to be, it's got to be an absolute condition of that lot. I think the I think the word reasonable was what they relied on in that. And they also I thought said something to the effect that to, to rule otherwise would negate the safety valve that the correct or the stop, relief the relief valve that would stop uh, off the safety valve. That's right. What they, what they said. Yeah, I, I, I guess I'm still the. They can have. I mean, the, the project without the porch is still a right. reasonable project. Still a viable yeah. project. Project reasonable house. It's as designed. It may not be as pretty as it might have been otherwise had they made some kind of accommodation for a porch or something within the setback. Um, but I, mean, I don't. I guess I, the problem I have, I don't, I don't see that, I, I have a hard time granting a variance so somebody can have a, a more house. pleasingly designed house. Yeah, it's not a hard job. Um, that's the difficulty I have. I have a hard job. Uh, I, 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 we can, I'm going to suggest a couple of things we could do. We could take a vote, see where we stand on this. Um, we can, of course, make a decision tonight on this. Um, if we're uncomfortable with that, we can also uh, recess the hearing and ask uh, further Chris for um, or others for more evidence of why this is um, um, why this complies with the hardship or or, recent, or recent court rulings or yeah or, or whatever so or, or Peter Malley. I'm sorry or Peter Malley. Well, no. Or, Peter Malia. I, I, I think it's up. Well, if we have concerns, we could ask Peter. Yeah. But I think at this point, at this point, I, I don't feel, in my mind, the applicant has mm -hmm. met this criteria. Um, <clears throat> we can give them another chance if they, or we can try and, try and decide now. I think is what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, and I, of course, I need to yeah. vote it, as I have happened already three uh, times <laughs> today. Can I Why not ask, ask first for a vote if? We're comfortable voting yet, or put it to the vote and see how it flies. Okay. Well, why don't, why don't I first ask? Would people be willing to vote on this last criteria, the hardship criteria, now, or uh, and see where it stands? 
This, if we if we say yes or no, this does not mean we've granted or not granted the variance. In the end, we will take one vote to grant or not grant the variance. This is to help us with that final decision. Right. Uh, so. Um, I'm, I'm having a difficult time because I, I, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder, and I thought the house was attractive before the porch was on, when they were roughing it. <laughs> and yes, it does look better with the porch, but you know, it's... That's neither here nor there. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's just appearance. Yeah. Okay, so, um, uh, let's just as consensus, are we willing to make it, uh, take a vote to see where we stand? Sure. I'm comfortable. Okay. All those in favor uh, that the applicant has met the last criteria, hardship provision, uh, uh, please raise your hand. Okay. Um, and I take it from the rest of that that the, the remaining people would vote no on this. Um, that's correct. Okay. So. I'm, I'm comfortable with that if that's. If I have one question on that. Just. I hope I'm not opening a can of worms. The house to the south of this house, there's three house lots in a row. The house to the south is probably 20 feet off the road. No. At some point in time, they will rebuild. It's grandfathered. It's yes, grandfathered. it's grandfathered. It's, it's yeah. grandfathered. So they can, they can be 20 feet. Yes. 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 The grandfather. That's that what it means grandfather. to be grandfather. It has nothing to do with yes. this. In, in fact, the, the, the term grandfather isn't really used anymore. Yes. Yeah. What it means is it's non conforming. It can stay non conforming. They can choose to make it conforming. They may not, unless we grant it, make it more non conforming. But they can rebuild it on exactly the way it is now without increasing volume. And it will stay non conforming. Yeah. So I'm my question that. is, are we handicapping this lot because of that lot? No. No. Okay. That shouldn't be part of all. Okay. It shouldn't be part of it. So, and I, um, I'll add, if we do vote to deny tonight, um, the applicant does have an ability to move for a rehearing, uh, saying we just said something, did something wrong. Yeah. And he also has access, to, he can go to the court if he wishes to. Uh, he has to move for rehearing right, first parties, yes. and have that fail. Um, but, um, I mean, I, I would rather give the uh, applicant a chance to present additional evidence if, mm -hmm. if we think that makes sense. Yeah. Um, Is there any point in asking um, uh, the building inspector how he feels? I'm not sure it would apply. I'm not sure it's or, relevant okay. to our decision. I didn't know in as much as we would in the past have the selectmen state a position if they wanted to. In this case, now we don't have that anymore. Well, I did uh, send a no, not in this one. Um, I've told the selectmen that there, are, since they can always move for a rehearing, right. they have that power. I've told the selectmen um, that. We're always interested in their view on every case right. in front of us. Um, but in as much as they're not here to discuss it, so it's no. sort of moot. So, I, again, I, I would, not to prolong the agony, right. but I, I would, I, 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 I'd, I'd, I'd I like would. to have Chris, give Chris a chance to. Yeah. Um, is, that okay? a, is that okay with everybody? Sure. Okay. Um, are you? I would welcome that. Okay. Sure. So, uh, the, we still have a hearing going on. Um, I've not closed it. Um, and what we're about to do, I think what we've agreed to do at this point, is to not, not discuss this case further. You have a very good idea of where we are on like this me, case. Would you like a motion for, for me to continue? No, I'll, I'll, I will continue the, the okay. hearing. Okay. Uh, a re, uh, recess or continue, whichever, uh, to another date, which we will set before we uh, close the hearing. Uh, which is the next question of um, when can we all meet again when it's convenient? Um, two to three. I don't. Have, I don't have limitations. I don't either. Same here. Not until you're March. going to be around. So anytime in February, you're okay. Okay. Um, the problem is I have to set the date, right. and time at this meeting. So my calendar. I'm going to suggest. I think it's. I think it's continue, not recess. Thank you. 
I never get that right. Um, calendars. Uh, take, don't take it to the bank. No, no, no. <laughs> so let's switch that way. I'm going to go out three weeks to this is the fourth. Um, is the 25th three weeks from now okay with everybody? Um, Chris? That's fine with me. Okay. It's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. Okay, so I'm going to continue the hearing to um, a meeting on February 25th, uh, Wednesday, uh, and that uh, our meeting will start at 7 o'clock. Um, and since I've made that note in this hearing, there will be no further public notice of that to the letters and so forth. And, and if Kevin wishes to make any further comments, he could. Yeah, well, um, the hearing will, you know, open again on the 25th, and everybody, anybody, not just Chris, can make further comments, including the butters who are not yet here, um, or anybody else who has interest. Okay. So, with that, uh, the matter of <coughs> uh, Caldwell is uh, is done for the night. So that's fine. Um, is that ours? No, this is it. Is Kev Kevin's. Okay. So now I will. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Now I'll open the public hearing on um, <coughs> Stamey, uh, which is 10 Candy Cane Lane. Um, and we have an applicant. Uh, I think Mr. Weeder is representing the applicant. This, there is a. There is a. Um, Septic map, I think, that shows things nicely. If everybody has seen this, so one can see the. It is an existing house. The what's described here is River Conservation District, um, which would be 75 feet from the Wildcat. And as you can see, most of the houses within that 75-foot um, setback, there is an existing porch, which is on that plan, and that's what we're talking about. There, there was a specific plan of the pose screen porch and yes. an elevation as well. That might be helpful. Okay. We have that. Here's the hard copies of the screen porch. Is that the way I think two copies? And also an elevation that shows the screen porch. Now, in fact, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, the footprint of the screen proposed screen porch is slightly different than the existing deck as well. If I'm not mistaken, smaller yes. and and showed it, shown by the different lines. The dotted line on that plan represents the uh, existing deck. This. Yes, and that goes all the way. Okay, yeah. Are you taking down the old deck? Or is this being built on top of the deck? Uh, the area where the screen porch would be built, you would have to reconstruct the existing deck. It's, it's not suitable to build a screen porch on top of it. Same footprint, though? It's slightly different. Uh, Did you two two yeah, yeah. I, yeah. what, what she meant, Steve, is, is this part of the deck being removed? Uh, it, it's not at the moment, but if it helped the situation to remove that, they, they're not heavily invested in that portion of the screen port. Because, in uh, fact, you're going to rebuild... Yeah, it, anyway. we, would, we would have to rebuild the, the deck that is now under where the screen porch would be. Which would include this. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I, we is haven't had a lengthy discussion as to whether they want to rebuild that portion or not, um, the portion beyond where the proposed screen porch is, but uh, it, it would probably have to be reconstructed as well if they wanted to keep it. But I guess, in, in general, that's negotiable. I, we we um, identify the square footage of the existing deck and the square footage of the screen porch. And if there's any help to 
the, the, reduce the footprint of the for the volume it may yeah. help in that regard. And in general, I, I'm here to clarify the the entire picture of, of the situation, and then we can discuss in detail from there. So in general, what we're looking at is, is a portion of the house that is now non-conforming because of the river, the, the conservation district setback. And the screen porch would be going on a portion of the existing deck and it would be the volume of that screen porch that we're asking for. In many towns, and even in Jackson a number of years ago, because of the, the footprint existing by the deck, this situation would be grandfathered. And you cool. say there's a new... Right way of explaining that, but just... Snowflake but, changed all that. Exactly. The snowflake changed it for the town of Jackson. I was on the planning board at the time. There was a lot of uh, people upset in town because of the expansion that took place there, and we had to solidify our description <coughs> of non-conforming, and we added that extra ammunition of Volume. volume and that's what makes our town unique and it it has it's a powerful uh, piece of that ordinance and it's probably done well and probably will do well for the town in the future um, however I don't think it was meant to stop this kind of situation it's it's a it's a screen porch. It's on an existing deck. Um, I, I, I don't see the harm. In, in your mind, it meets the spirit of the ordinance. Yes. The difference being an open deck versus enclosed deck. <clears throat> yes. So it's it's the the structure that would hold up the roof, and that same structure would be how you would fasten your screens to keep the insects out. They, the, the owners, the Stamies live in Florida, they spend their time here in the summer and um, would like to spend as much outdoor time as possible and the screen porch would, would uh, greatly benefit that location. The view of the river is very nice. Does it change the roof line? Uh, it would be adding a roof over that, and in, in this, this elevation yeah. here, so you can yeah. see, you can see. Like here it's brand new. Then. This is existing. That's part of an ongoing addition, and that would be the approximate shape of the roof. We haven't done any detailed um, drawings of the porch until uh, it's a possibility. Is the porch still on the same plane as, as the deck is, or is it being raised? Uh, it would be. It would start at the same height. The deck that would be removed would go back in the same at the same height, and then. In fact, it looks like, like that. It yeah. Looks like that. Yeah. Who is the neighbor on the other side of the river? Like who are the neighbors? It's the town. Well, it's the town. The town is primarily. It's the old dump site. It's directly across. Right. And uh, but there are it's going to negatively affect the value. There's an abutter. Yeah, there's an abutter <laughs> right here. Uh, I could that's the closest. Sorry. Um, the other unique aspect of this lot is that. What we're, what's hindering this is the River Conservation District, and that, from what I understand, um, it's a 75-foot minimum set, uh, setback. There are other areas of the river that it's greater because of the, the, the land being flatter and 100-year flood plain spreading out 
this plan does show the 100 year floodplain that doesn't doesn't even come into the area where the deck is because of the grade of this lot it's uh, rather steep from the deck to the water the 100 year floodplain comes up approximately halfway up that bank so technically the house is not in the 100 year house or porch um, is still far enough away from the 100 year <coughs> flood line so Stephen, um, you heard our conversation over the last hour about yes. special, what is unique about a particular property. Yes. Uh, I mean, surely there are other porches on other houses up in that area. Right. Um, heard other so places. everybody right. has, is facing that same restriction. Yes. Um, as well as there's others. Um, who I know who own property up there who were planning on enlarging it up and now cannot um, because of that addition of the zoning ordinance. So what's what what what's what's the argument here that there are special conditions that are unfair to uh, the Stammies um, uh, because there's something unique about this property. The, the deck exists. It's it, it just simply seems unfair not to let them put this porch on a deck that exists. And what supports the deck, Stephen? Well, right now it's it's simply sitting on uh, concrete blocks. So, uh, to to and, it, and how you would alter that? How would you alter? Would you would you change the the um, foundation or support of the porch? I would have to change the support and, and put in proper uh, below frost piers to support. Uh, the and and would you do that if it was enclosed or not enclosed? Uh, it, to to. To improve the deck, uh, to have the deck built properly, yes, you, you would do that. So, uh, to make the, the deck uh, meet the grade of construction of the rest of the house, it should have proper pier, and, piers. And SBC underneath. as well? And SBC as well? Yes. Um, I, I have more trouble with this than I did the other one in that um, unless you could show me that putting a roof on um, or a certain type of roof on would distribute snow load better or safer or mm -hmm. remove snow safer, um, it, to me it's, it's, it's a homeowner wishing to enclose a, right. an existing deck. And while it may improve the 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 property, and I, I can't imagine how it detracts from right. the adjoining properties, but I I still see it as increasing volume right. in a in a river conservation district. Okay, well I, I have one stab that you can <laughs> okay. all That's what I was trying to, take, I, take I was trying to open now. the door for. Okay, it. Um, the existing house you see has three levels. The upper level of that house was finished space was sold as finished space. There's plenty of documentation of that. With the current uh, plans of renovation, that space, which was volume, grandfathered volume, is now going to be used for utility space. The stairway has been removed. It's now a simple attic drop-down stair. And so, if you want to think creatively, we were trading <laughs> that volume from the attic. It's called mitigating. Okay. Mm -hmm. I sitting on the planning board for years, we often took two abutting non-conforming lots. Someone needed a boundary line survey. As long as we boundary line adjustment, as long as we kept the two lots end result same 
same square footage. Can can you give me an approximate square footage exchange there? With that, I, I I I'm confident that it's there's there's more cubic cubic footage in the attic than there will be in this. So you're giving. I'd be caught. I would guarantee that it would not exceed the volume of the attic. So you're relinking, relinquishing X volume for X volume. Yes. Okay. Before we get too far into discussion, we should allow uh, abutters, uh, if any present, uh, to comment and Stephen. And, and certainly. And Kevin. Kevin. Uh, and then, um, Stephen, you'll have a chance to sure. uh, uh, comment at the very end. So, um, are there abutters who wish to speak? Okay. My question so, is, Stephen, uh, can you sit back? Sorry. And, I mean, your name is? My name is Arthur Lansing. No, Stephen, can you move back away from the table? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Arthur, you're welcome to, to stay. Oh, uh, I'm fine right here. Okay. <laughs> I actually own property across the street, uh, 12 Moon Road. My question is, is that conservation easement, a district, whatever you want to call it, when was that put in place? That's a you interesting question. It's 1987, 88, something like that. I think. And then, how did that original deck get built? That's because uh, that house was built in 1991. I well, I believe there was a building permit issued in I think 88. Um, okay. Okay. Does Kevin have any comment? Okay. Um, but um, I, I mean, let, let me let me let me suggest that. Because uh, I, I, I anticipate there might be some issue with this. Um, whether or not the existing property um, uh, was built legally or not mm -hmm. um, is not really before this board. Um, the building inspector certainly can make a determination about that um, and the selectman can then decide to take some enforcement action if necessary which could involve removing the deck mm -hmm. if that's the issue um, and the selectman in the past have taken others have taken that action before there have been decks removed from houses in Jackson um, now this is more than 10 years old, um, so the okay. owner would be able to apply for equitable waiver at, to this board and may or may not be able to, to, to obtain that. But I guess what I'm trying to say is I know we're going to end up talking about whether or not something happened in 88 or 90, whenever, but yeah, I, want to, I want to emphasize to everybody that's probably not going to be part, that, that's the I, I can't foresee how that is going to become a criteria in what we decide tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, but with that said, um, I'm please speak more, or if, if Kevin can add, shed light on that. Well, or the only other thing that I have to say on that is um, it's a deck. It's it's not conforming. How can you change that? That's that's my thing. My property is non-conforming. I could only do what I could do with it. So what makes that property so different than mine? I can't screen in a little deck. If they want to screen in porch, throw a screened in tent out there, you know. But as far as it being different than other properties that are in that area and that we all have to abide by those new rules, I see nothing different with that. And that's all I have to say. Kevin, do you have anything to add? Um, just that as a, as a town uh, building inspector, um, I did receive two calls, and I did talk to yes. this gentleman, and I talked to another uh, abutter who's not here tonight, and, um, you know, basically his concern was, I mean, there was a lot of things not done where it can pass, but that's not the issue tonight. And, but to have, what they're telling me is to have more stuff done in the future is not right. And I mean, I, I've, I've got to say that. I mean, and Stephen was my own boss, so I got to kind of stay neutral. I'm just stating the facts. Um, 
And I know, I have another friend who owns another lot on the other side, and last year he was denied. So he's a good friend of mine, he's over in uh, Finland right now. Um, so there's a major issue up there. I mean, just small lots. Either they're, they're too small to build or, or you're, you're, you're not in the right, you know, you're either in the 50 foot setback or the 75 foot um, river conservation district. And, um, and uh, let's see, I, I was going to clarify the, uh, how they determined that um, the 75 feet. That's, it's, that's very well written in the zoning. It's, it's based on the um, federal flood maps. If you look in there, there's either A, the study A or AE, and you look in there, and it's the 100-year flood, 100 floodplain. Right. Uh, and it's based on that. And they actually have a definition in there um, where to determine the, the um, where you measure from the river. Now, if you go back to the 50-foot um, setback, it's very vague where you measure, measure that. But um, either way, the, most of the house is in the... <laughs> Yes, in both. So, um, I, 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 like I said, I think the issue is what's on the table now in, in the future. You know, whatever happened in the past, it happened. Um, and, you know, you don't need to go back there. Well, Kevin, you want to keep track of the things that you find vague as you're new here. Um, I know um, the selectmen have are planning on arranging a meeting with. And the ZBA and the planning board and the building inspector and I'm not quite sure who else, uh, but really to try to provide input to the planning board. Fire marshal. And fire marshal, yes. Where, uh, where there are things that are vague or um, where, where we've run into problems. Yeah. Um, and certainly precisely how one determines what a, where the bank of the river is, which I think is what you're addressing yeah. um, for the purposes of um, the non-river conservation district areas uh, might be something you want to bring up. If not, I certainly will. Yeah, and we Pre have new FEMA maps. And we have new FEMA maps too. Yeah. It, particularly, Kevin, because you're you're sort of where the rubber meets the road. You know, you're the one that hears the issues that applicants are having. Right. Um, and if you find recurring issues that you think could be better defined or more clearly defined, um, the planning board would. Be aided greatly by your input. Right. Yeah, it needs some work. <laughs> and we'll have that opportunity. I think uh, we're planning on doing it after town meeting, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, okay, a any other comments? Uh, Stephen, would you like to say anything in closing? Yeah, I, 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 know, I know Kevin is trying to do uh, a good job with his work trying to start with a, uh, it, it, not that the previous building inspectors haven't, they, I think they've done a decent job and he's trying to continue and in that same vein, I'm here to ask for permission, not beg for forgiveness. We're here, we, we are trying to do what we're supposed to do, that Stamey's are invested in doing the right thing. So, um, trying to show that that process is the right way. Okay. I'm available for any other questions, but I don't really Thank you. have any other comments. Okay, I, we should we, would anybody like to make any comments? I don't want to be the first one. You know, I'm sitting here saying it'd be lovely to have a screen to the porch. There's <laughs> nobody across the way, except that it's in a flood zone and it's non-conforming and it's... Well, to me the issue is, it's, it's much as with the last one, I agree that it doesn't really do a great deal of harm to, you know, make just a screen in porch. However... However, that's the However, word. everybody... First of all, we have the butter who has some concerns, which we didn't have last time. Mm -hmm. And secondly, it's there's nothing unique about it. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets mosquitoes from coming up from the river. 
Which is what he pointed Most out. Most people are not yeah. conforming uh, because of, you know, the River Conservation yeah. District was set up later. So again, it, it is not unique in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I tend to I tend to agree. It, it, I mean, as much as I, I buy into the concept of volume for volume mitigation, yeah. um, I still see this as being almost arbitrary um, that um, in a perfect world I would ask them to make the porch more conforming because it's it apparently um, was built where it shouldn't have been um, yeah. and um, uh, I'd like to comment I, on that well, I, actually, yeah, we, that's we, 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 we don't we don't really know and, uh, and, and uh, I, I think that's something I, for Kevin I to sign I, that, I misspoke yeah. but I, I do have trouble with approving I, I have so much trouble with the concept of, as the abutter pointed out, the uniqueness of this with a lack of, um, that I, I as, as much as I agree with you, it's a porch, it'd be nice to have it. It's yeah, nice to have, but it doesn't yeah. meet. But it doesn't meet, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. 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 Because my, my um, you start talking about the spirit of the audience and what people care about. Um, if you had to pick two things in the zoning or the current zoning ordinance, that have engendered a lot of comment, a lot of interest. Um, one would be the whole protection of the Wildcat River as things mm -hmm. in as a scenic and whatever river. Wild and scenic. Wild, Wild and scenic, scenic river. The That's tripartite right. agreement that we had or maybe still have. Um, I mean, I, my impression is that the River Conservation District, especially as it relates to the Wildcat River, is something that the town cares deeply about and is very much um, um, protecting that is very much in the public interest and the spirit of the zoning ordinance. Right. Likewise, um, you know, it's except for the helicopter thing, it's hard to think of anything that engendered more uh, um, interest in zoning in this town than the snowflake and the resulting ordinance that uh, came about um, uh, because of that. I also I, I think that that at least based on the public actions that's also something of uh, keen interest in this town. Right. Um, certainly, the planning board could choose to modify it, uh, but they have not. Actually, uh, they, actually, they couldn't. The wild and scenic is forever. No, no. I mean, I'm yeah. talking about the uh, the uh, non-conforming use for right. volume. Okay. Yes. Uh, on Snowflake. Um, so I I I think. Uh, I, I'm going to have a hard time, I think, voting on or seeing any, almost any of the criteria having been met. Um, but we should probably just go through each one and think about it. Um, any other comments? Well, I, like I explained before, I don't oh. want to have any voting time on this, but I do have a question. On that existing deck, if he does want to rebuild it, can he? Uh, put the same bracing in that he would need if he did have a. He has long stayed. The, the, the zoning ordinance would allow him to rebuild that deck with almost any kind of material uh, within the same volume. Right. So, so with, with in this case, that, square footage. Well, uh, well, the volume being the height, the width, right. and the depth. So he, he could so can't put in those. Was it? High oh yes, he could. He could. He, he could. He could put in a three-story sub-basement in there if he wanted to. I mean, okay, so so with that point, Frank, that would be the only disruption difference in the construction of a screen porch than doing a repair to the deck. Well, no, because you'll have a roof. And it, yes, from a construction stand, disruption standpoint to the lot, anything to do with the river would be the same is if you just replace that deck. The roof, the roof is not changing anything about the conservation of that. I, I, I guess I would disagree. Uh, among I, if, nothing clearly, else, if, nothing else, if nothing else, you're replacing what is now a semi-permeable semi barrier with an impermeable barrier. Please elaborate. I'm not you have a deck that the water rain falls through and goes to the soil underneath. Well, you can control the water from the roof as well. Well, no, but that's the point: is the water is no longer going to be. I mean, it's, it's as if you paved over that area, which is 
something that well, you can control the runoff really, really of water on the roof. Really, really yeah, the, the volume is the key thing. That's relevant, though. Sir, that that isn't relevant particularly. Well, it, 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 it is. It is the river conservation. I mean, it, it, that, for example, uh, in term, even though it does not apply in this case, um, you'd have to go further down river. But the um, yeah, the, uh, the, water, the, the watershed or shoreline protection act yeah. would not allow them to, for example, put a paved area in there because it's per it not permanent. The, yeah. Let's kind of see if we had. No, that's all right. I'll tell you one thing your volume. The, I look at, I've lived here long enough and I've seen boards and zoning and all this. My problem is. If I have 40 people sitting here, they all should be equal. They all should be created equal. And I don't care what town you go to. It's I like him, I don't like him, and that's how it goes. And that's why you have some of your zoning problems now. Well, and that's why we're be trying to apply these criteria right. as uh, you know, without regard to who the applicant is. I know, but I'm telling yeah. you, that should be the problem. And if I can make a comment. I think that this, if you want to go back 10 years compared to now, I think that the fact that we go through these criteria, I mean, I've heard, you know, 13, 14 years ago, people say, well, it might as not even, well, even come in for a variance because we're not going to give it to them. That's very different than what we're doing right here. We're going through in a very logical well, fashion. I know that, but I'm and, just saying. Uh, you know, it's, it really has absolutely nothing. I, I didn't know either one of these applicants. So no, I know. It's not who I like and who I don't like. It. I'm just anyway. telling you, this is what's happened for years. Oh, I know. I'm I'm sure. tell you that. Um, I, I think that Frank's point with respect to the sacrosanct of the Wildcat River being a wild and scenic zone, and um, just a little history, what drove that was when um, Mr. Astrakhan and Shannon wanted to build a... And right. they could, Jerry, they could never have built a power plant there. But they, they had a FERC permit. And the only thing that kept them from doing it was the fact that their collection point was in the rural residential. And that's when Senator Rudman and Tom Burak got up and made it a wild and scenic. But when Wentworth Hall tried to have hydropower there, Many years they ago. They couldn't even run it because they never had enough water. Enough head, yes. Years ago. Mm -hmm. So never but, but to Frank's point, that, that wild and scenic um, ruling made that a very well, protected area. Yeah. Whether you agreed with it or not, I mean, it did. No, but I'm just saying that was a big because of that, right? Okay. I'm ready to vote on this. Okay. Um, let's uh, do, does that, uh, all those in favor? That the app, well, let me step back. Um, Huntley, are you voting on this? No. Okay. So Huntley is not voting uh, because of a conflict of interest. That means there are four people voting um, on this. Um, to have a variance granted, uh, one needs to have three of five votes. Um, you have the option of if for us to go ahead, we will go. We can go ahead, but if we go ahead, um, you can't then, uh, you know, cry foul. Um, we, since there'd only be four people voting, I'm willing to postpone this till there's five people voting, um, uh, and we postpone it to the 25th. Um, and. Is, is Steve the applicant or representing the applicant? He's representing the applicant. So, I I, know, do a, I shouldn't say this because I'm not sure it'd make much difference in far I think we're going with this. Well, do, do, but I'm do willing. I, if the Samies want to try another approach at that meeting, do we start from. I have that from close the hearing. I did take new yes. evidence, but, um, you yeah, know, because you are being. The, you, uh, you are being prejudiced because you need three of four votes to mm -hmm. get the parents. With respect to d direct answer to you, is it if that would be a new, new application. application? Yes. Okay. And okay. and it may uh, uh, it, the choice is yours. 
So I have to decide at this moment whether it's a continuation of where we are on the 25th. Uh, on the 20th? Where we are, we're just continuing this mo from this moment forward yes. on the 25th. We will have our conversation. Right. Um, you know, if there's new evidence that um, nobody knows about right now, we'll, we'll, we'll receive it. Am, am I right or wrong? Is he, is he precluded from altering his application? He can amend his application. Right, that's right. Uh, with new, with, I mean, because the hearing's still going right. on. Yeah, I misspoke. You, okay. you may alter your... Okay, so then I would like to forward to... Okay. Um, and we will hopefully have a fifth member there. Um, I, I, no, you you have to. Well, no, no. <laughs> we could we could end up that, with, that's the appropriate. We, 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 we could end up with only three people right. on the twenty fifth. Right. No, uh, because Dave will be back with them, will No, no. I mean, he will be, but yeah. you know whether or not he's being theoretical. Theoretical for your other and theoretical. All right. Or we could prevail upon Gino to come and see. Yeah. Yes, I, I'd like to. Okay. Um, okay, so we will. Uh, what's the word again? Continue. We will continue this public hearing uh, to the 25th. Um, if you have any new evidence to submit, please submit it in writing yeah. 10 days before the 25th. Uh, so we have a chance to consider it. Um, and um, we will. Uh, and, you know, certainly as a rebutter, you're welcome to come back or any other rebutter. Um, I'm going to ask that on the 25th that we not rehash things we've heard today. So if somebody's going to speak, it's going to, I'm going to ask that it be something that is new and also relevant to the discussion that you've heard. And one question I yes, had, sir. when you were talking about the footings, you wanted to replace the footings and you said that you could go down, were you talking the whole foundation? Or? I think that's wrong. Um, I, I think it's probably best that, um, since that's a hypothetical question, yeah. I will not answer it okay. um, and if and uh, you know if that were and the only point. reason why I asked that question is is because there's a gentleman up on Spring Street that was here I don't know a year or two ago that was looking to take the pilings out from underneath his camp and put a full-fledged foundation in, and he was denied. Mm -hmm. We denied it. But they, I think it they was, would not be asking to put a I, I, I suspect there was something. I suspect there might be something more to that denial right. than just that. Um, because uh, he, he had a setback problem from a butters. Yes. Uh, and a road, I think. And we used the mm -hmm. volume issue. You, yes. I wasn't on the board, but you used the volume issue. Yeah, but, but we're talking the conservation area, which I would think would be more yeah, stricter. I believe he was trying to change the volume as well. Okay. Um, enlarge the deck, go up higher or something. Been. Yeah, um, I, 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 don't I, exactly. I, mean, I, I don't remember it exactly, but I yeah. don't think the nature of the foundation was an issue in that case. And I, right, because I, I remember all the other properties in that area are pretty much in the filings as well. So right. it was like, what's the difference? Okay, okay but again, uh, yeah. I should not talk about hypotheticals. Kevin, can you be, Kevin, can you be here on the 25th? Yeah, I think I'll be here, yeah. Kevin, by the way, we're well, glad to have you. Uh, you know, prior building inspectors tended not to attend, mm -hmm. uh, but we appreciate we appreciate your attendance uh, and your and your input. Yes. And um, okay, so um, I've I've continued this public hearing. Uh, so we're now just in our general meeting. I believe there's nothing else to discuss on our agenda. Any old business or anything? I make a motion we adjourn. Uh, one last thing. There are new books behind you uh, that the town paid for. Uh, you're welcome. It's somehow it's an inch thicker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so please pick up.